Welcome everyone to the June 28th meeting of the Franklin Municipal Planning Commission. Uh, the first item on the agenda is, is the minutes of the May 24th meeting. Move for approval. Second. We have a motion and a second. Are there any comments or on the minutes? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries, minutes are approved. The next item is for citizen comments mm -hmm. for items that are not on the agenda. And this is an item agenda that we have every meeting uh, that allows an opportunity for Franklin citizens to be heard on items that are not on tonight's agenda. Um, and so does any, are there any comments from anyone that would like to make um, on items not on the agenda tonight? Seeing none, we'll move along. Next is it announcements. Um, good evening, everyone. We do have an announcement, and we've notified most of you, or all of you, that the order for items 29 and 30 were mistakenly switched. Number 29 should be resolution 46, which is for the Smith property in the Mays Creek Basin. And item number 30 should actually be resolution 47, um, for the the city proposed amendment for the rest of the basin which is contingent upon um, the item before it okay. so we would ask that you make a motion and vote to reorder those two items so I would enter 47 so we're going to reverse the order resolution on the 46. agenda so that we handle resolution 46 first and then resolution 47 therefore item 29 would be item 30 item 30 would be item 29 that's correct i'll make that motion we have a motion alma I'll second. and a second all in favor say aye. aye aye opposed motion carries we will reverse that order any other announcements emily no other announcements okay i would like to make an announcement um there is, is the this, is this screen screening out, streaming outside? It, it is. It, it is, is on? on? Okay. So we do. So we have outside in the, in the, the open area, there is a, a, a video monitor that is streaming this meeting. So if you're uncomfortable at, at, at a stand, uh, you're welcome to go out. There's, there's room to see and watch and look. You'll hear what's going on at the meeting, so you're welcome to do that if you'd like to do that. And uh, um, the main thing is we want to make sure that there's there's good e ingress and egress that you're able to move in and out of the room. So be careful about blocking uh, aisleways and things like that. So, okay, the next item is a vote uh, to place non-agenda items on the agenda. Uh, this is. Um, um, something used uh, on rare instances. Uh, does any of the, anyone have an item that they'd like to place on the agenda for tonight? Seeing none, we'll move along. Uh, the next item is for consent agenda. These are items that are deemed by the Planning Commission to be non-controversial and routine in nature, and so we handle them uh, with one uh, motion. So the items tonight that are on the consent agenda. We have two separate consents. Uh, the initial consent is item number two, <coughs> items number five through 17, items 20 through 28. Does anyone wish to pull an item, Ann? I, I, I would like to uh, take 26 off the 26, okay, consent. so item number 26 will be pulled from the consent agenda. So again, item two, Items 5 through 17, and item 20 through 25, and items 27 and 28 will be on the initial consent agenda. Do I have a motion for approval? Move, Move. for approval. Second. We have a motion and second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. For our secondary consent, uh, Lisa will recuse herself from these next four items. So secondary consent will be items three and four and items 18 and 19. Do I have a motion for approval? Move for approval. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously.
Okay, then moving into the items in the agenda, we have pulled item number 26 from consent agenda. So item number 26, Riser Point PUD subdivision, final plat, section five, creating eight residential lots and two open space lots on 12.68 acres, located north of Del Rio Pike. <coughs> Staff? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. This plot intends to create eight single family residential lots per the previously approved site plan for Riser Point Section 5. Staff recommends approval with conditions. Okay. Would anyone from the public wish to speak to this item? Is there anyone here representing the applicant on this item? Uh, Maverick Green with Goodall Homes here to represent Goodall Homes. Okay. And do you have a? Uh, yes, two two uh, questions. I guess uh, there's a special note on this plat that says, as per the condition of approval of Section Five of the Riser Point Subdivision, the City of Franklin Board of Mayor and Aldermen indicated the property owners in section one through four shall not be responsible or obligated to obtain the common open space located in sections five and six. And the, the, the uh, other part to this kind of has some other comments about uh, the Riser Point Homeowners Association covenants, but if you could just make a comment, I would appreciate it. Sure, absolutely. Um, so as part of the entitlements for this section of riser point, this phase five, um, it was annexed in or will be annexed into the existing um, original riser point. And so one of the conditions of approval from BOMA was that uh, sections one through four would not be burdened with the maintenance of open spaces within sections five and then what will be section six in the future. So the, uh, the declaration amendment reflects that and so uh, and working with staff, we came up with the language that's written there as the special note on the plat. Thank you very much. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, the other part was a question that I had about uh, some of the um, changes in conditions of the area that I guess would be the cutting and filling. And so I just wanted to yeah, have the staff the, comment. The question was uh, about some. Uh, Manipulation in within the floodplain, just um, near the river there, and uh, there is cutting that was approved on this plan, but it is only cut. There will be no additional fill placing the floodplain that wasn't permitted via a LOMAR that was uh, approved by FEMA. So this was should be just cut in the floodplain in this area. And also, what about all the things that were cut that were uh, all the greenery that was cut down? There should be no specimen trees would have been removed, but anything else, any invasives and those type things would have been possibly removed during the grading operation. Okay, because it really looks a lot different mm -hmm. now. Okay. Thank yes, you. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Okay, are there any other questions for the applicant? On this? <coughs> so do we have a motion for this item? Move for approval of staff conditions. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Motion carries. Thank you. Okay, the next item on the agenda is the newly numbered 29, which will be for resolution number 47, uh, number 46. Consideration of resolution 2018-46 to be entitled a resolution to adopt an Envision Franklin Plan Amendment for properties located at and near 3610 and 3698 North Chapel Road and 4417 and 4468 Murfreesboro Road and 151 Trinity Road to change the design co concept from development reserve to conservation subdivision and from neighborhood commercial 
the neighborhood mixed use. And this item is going to be a public hearing, and we will start off with staff presentation. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Tonight's item is the first consideration in a number of steps required for development approval. This item tonight is regarding an amendment to Envision Franklin, which is the city's long-term visioning document for how property should develop in the future. If approved, future steps required would include detailed discussion of sewer infrastructure, interlocal agreements with the county, and plans of service all which must occur prior to annexation into the city is considered and prior to development approvals. In order for these future steps to take place and accurate analysis to be conducted, it is essential to understand the underlying land use policy, which is why this amendment to Envision Franklin is the first step. As a reminder of how we've gotten to this point, a non-contiguous annexation request was submitted by the applicant in July of 2016. The BOMA voted to initiate an annexation study for this property at the, Ju at the June 27, 2017 BOMA meeting. With that action, the board voted to allow for further study of the land use policy in the Envision Franklin document <coughs> and for de more details on the feasibility and cost of providing city services and infrastructure. If Envision Franklin is amended, the new land use policy would provide a baseline to ascertain detailed cost and analysis of sewer extension and other necessary services and infrastructure. These studies and costs would be discussed at future times prior to the annexation or development approvals. Planning staff would like to be clear with the Planning Commission that until further study is conducted on the infrastructure cost and until decisions regarding the, that infrastructure are made by the Board of Mayor and Aldermen, the Planning and Sustainability Department would not be able to support annexation of the property. However, tonight is a hearing regarding the future land use policy only and not plans of service or annexation. So I just wanted to give that as a, kind of an interlude into the staff recommendation and staff report, which Andrew will provide. Okay. The Smith property is made up of approximately 500 acres in the Mays Creek drainage basin. It's located in the eastern part of the Franklin urban growth boundary, the UGB. The property boundaries are hatched on the projected map and encompass the northeast and southeast quadrants of the North Chapel Road and Highway 96 intersection as well as spanning along the north side of Highway 96. Mays Creek flows through the property, creating a si significant amount of floodplain. The Envision Franklin design concept for this area is mostly development reserve, which supports low density residential uses due to the lack of existing infrastructure and services. Envision Franklin also supports a future neighborhood commercial node at the intersection of North Chapel and 96. The applicant is proposing a change from development reserve to conservation subdivision. This change would support clustered development of single family homes and secondary uses of big houses, which could be up to four units, and duplexes, which would be two units, with a minimum of 50% preserved open space. Moreover, the applicant is proposing a special consideration be added that would increase the building height maximum from two and a half stories to three stories uh, for the big house in the conservation subdivision design concept. The applicant is also proposing to change the neighborhood commercial node um, to neighborhood mixed use. <clears throat> the key differences being the inclusion of a variety of residential uses, including multifamily, assisted living, mixed uses, and a maximum building height of three. The project submittal contains a conceptual master plan as required by the Envision Franklin amendment process. However, land entitlements are requested and approved during the development plan process and are not granted with this amendment request. If this amendment is approved, the master plan will undergo a detailed review by the Franklin Development Review Team, the Planning Commission, <coughs> as well as the Board of Mayor and Aldermen. 
And it should be noted that the intensity of the master plan is counter to the overall majority opinion expressed during the public outreach phase and by the survey results, but would also be needed to offset the cost of ex extending infrastructure. Infrastructure has been a key consideration in every discussion, specifically regarding sewer availability, roadway improvements, and school capacity. We're still in the very early phases of a lengthy process, so the details have yet to be worked out. The roadway and sewer components are initiated during the plan of service discussion and during the assessment of impact fees. Citizens repeatedly voice concerns about overcrowding at Page Middle School and nearing capacity at Trinity and Page High. These issues would need to be collaboratively addressed in the coming years. Since the fall of 2017, <coughs> several attempts have been made to engage the citizens, the Planning Commission, as well as the Board of Mayor and Aldermen. The staff have addressed topics related to Mays Creek at five different joint conceptual workshops, a mobile workshop, two public meetings, and an online survey. At the May 23rd neighborhood meeting, the staff provided an overview of the process and the applicant made a presentation outlining their vision for the property. <clears throat> and the meeting was well attended and many citizens voiced their concerns. As a reminder, a special BOMA work session was held on May 1st to discuss growth and annexation in the UGB. The Mays Creek Basin was the only basin to rate as a midterm annexation capability. The other areas designated as development reserve and Envision Franklin rated as long-term capabilities. Due to this midterm capability ranking, the Mays Creek Basin would be the most appropriate of all the development reserve areas for consideration of a land use policy change. This amendment request represents the largest land holding under single ownership within the eastern part of the Franklin Urban Growth Boundary. If the Planning Commission decides to maintain the current land uses and the Smith property is developed in Williamson County under the county zoning, the likelihood of the city ever expanding into the Mays Creek Basin is significantly diminished. If the Planning Commission chooses to approve the Smith Amendment request, it will open the door for detailed discussions during the annexation process on the feasibility of providing sewer and other municipal services. In order to move to the next step of analysis and discussion of feasibility of services, the staff recommends approval with conditions of resolution 2018-46. <clears throat> the staff recommends disapproval of the special consideration to change the height maximum from two and a half stories to three stories in the conservation subdivision design concept for properties within 750 feet of the Murfreesboro Road right-of-way in order to maintain the single family scale of the big houses. The staff also recommends adding a special consideration limiting multifamily residential to be located above active ground level commercial uses to ensure a vertical mix of uses and to prevent conventional multifamily structures. This special consideration is recommended because land area at the intersection should be primary, primarily utilized for commercial uses and not standalone multifamily. And it would also set a precedent of multifamily structures flanking Murfreesboro Road. Okay. <clears throat> okay, that brings us to the public comment portion of this meeting. So we're going to start, we're going to open a public hearing. Uh, so I got just from the perspective of order in the group, we've got a few ground rules that I want to go over with you. First, we need for you to line up at the lectern so that you're ready to speak when the person ahead of you gets through with her, his or her comments. You will need to always use the microphone, otherwise our recording system will not pick up your comments. You'll need to give us your name and address as you begin to make your comments. And then in order to allow everyone an opportunity to make public comments, our protocol calls for a two minute comment period. We're using a timer that you see on the end of the, the desk down here with a buzzer so you can tell when your two minutes are getting close to being up. If it doesn't sound like you're into your conclusion, I'll encourage you to wrap up your comments. If you are here as part of an organized group, you may wish to have someone make a statement on behalf of your group and then you can indicate your support by show of hands. Uh, but you're certainly welcome to make comments individually uh, during the course of this public hearing. And then once the public comments have been completed, uh, then I'm going to declare the public hearing closed and the Planning Commission will begin deliberations of the item and the opportunity for public input will be over at that point. 
So with that, if you will take your position at the lectern and, and uh, we will proceed on with the public hearing. Okay, I'm James Anderson. I live at 3795 North Chapel Road. Um, I'm a longtime resident of this area. Uh, I've been here since 1985. Um, the concerns are, are many about what's happening here, but I think one really important issue is that the Planning Commission themselves have said that there's a huge majority of the people that live in this area that don't want to see the kind of development that's going to happen that will bring so many people into this congested area that traffic is already a problem at times. And I think, you know, you, you've heard from the people that live here and will have to live through this expansion that we really don't want to see the expansion happen not unless all the things are in place to support it before the expansion would begin. And I think that's reasonable. I know the traffic is so bad. On Highway 96, when you try and turn off and, and go across traffic, you're taking your life into your own hands. People zip by there all the time and the traffic is already 13,000 cars a day which is a huge number for a two-lane highway. Yes, it's gonna get expanded and it'll be better, but we all know that fixing road systems takes a long time. It's not a short process. And uh, we just ask for you to, as public servants, think about the good of the public that's already there. And that's my request. Thank you. Let's, we need to we need to avoid these rounds of applause, please. Let's just continue with public comments. Thank you. I'm Dr. Michelle Fiscus. I'm a pediatrician. I live at 167 Chester Stevens Road in Franklin, which is in the villages of Clovercroft development off 96 um, and 65. And I am also speaking on behalf of of many of the residents of the development in which I reside. Um, I'm also uh, a parent of children at Page High School, and so I'd like to speak specifically about the impact that uh, high-density development has upon our schools in Williamson County, um, especially when there is no requirement for development to allow for um, property to build a school. Uh, Trinity Elementary School will be at capacity in two years. This is after just having built Clovercroft Elementary School to offload the, the children from McKay's Mill. And um, in just a matter of a few years, we're already over capacity. Page Middle School is over capacity. Those children are in portables. And Page High School is um, in desperate need of repairs that cannot uh, yet be funded by the county. Um, we have also, um, I'm, as I said, I'm a pediatrician and um, recognizing the importance of, of adequate sleep for our teenagers. One of the reasons why we can't move high school times uh, back in the mornings is because we don't have adequate busing because we don't have bus drivers and that's despite um, very generous um, packages that have been offered to bus drivers they are given benefits that are in excess of what our teachers and our ancillary staff receive and yet we still can't recruit bus drivers to bus the students that we currently have in our schools our children are sitting three to a seat and sometimes on the floor of those buses because we don't have bus drivers. That's not something that we can just make appear when another 1,300 residences are built on that property. So I ask that you um, not uh, vote for this um, change in the urban growth plan and um, consider the impact on our schools. Thank you. Hi, my name is Lauren O'Mara. I'm a county resident of nearly six years. I live at 4168 Clovercroft Road. And I grew up in this area attending Brentwood Middle and Brentwood High School. And I'm also a small business owner employing three individuals in this area. I want to say thank you to the Planning Commission 
for their work for our community. I have a friend who was a planning commissioner for his community for many years and another friend who has a career in city planning. So I have a lot of sympathy and respect for the work that you do. And I understand that you must hear all proposals that are brought to you. And I trust that what I'm about to say is pretty obvious to you, but I wanted to be on the record with my concerns. So based on the statements in the Envision Franklin plan and the TACIR policies, that the approach of the city, the county, and the state are to make sure that the infrastructure is in place before expanding. It's pretty obvious that no infrastructure changes have been made in this area since the, they were, it was first assessed for the Envision Franklin plan, no sewer, school expansion, or road upgrades, et cetera. I understand that there's something of a catch-22 to this consideration and that the Smiths have proposed to, proposed to build the necessary sewer connection as a part of their plan, as well as the firehouse in their development, but this is not adequate infrastructure state of the other school and roadways that are needed. So I respectfully request that you decline the proposed amendment at this time, and I do have additional concerns about the content of the proposed development and the urgency of the request, which I will bring up in future planning meetings if necessary. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> I was saying ask for the hands of Pete the Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so the, 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 there's been a suggestion that, that as you as you find favor in comments made, that, that let's see a show of hands and and um, you know so we get a, a sense of your support for the comments. Thank you. Proceed. Kathy Danner, five one three Brandon Lane, Franklin, Tennessee. I'm here tonight as one of the county commissioners that represents many of these folks here that don't have a voice on the Franklin Board of Mayor and Aldermen. Um, I also want to thank you for what you do. I know it's a tough job. I want to say that I live in Franklin, and I think that Franklin does an exemplary, an exemplary job. Uh, my husband and I have enjoyed living here for 12 years. I also want to say I have no issue with developers or well-planned growth. I've only come before the city government one other time that I can remember, and it has been for the very same issue, high-density planning. It's obvious that many in the area are opposed to high-density planning. I think everyone knows that growth is coming. But the ask tonight is that you not amend your vision plan for the sake of this very high density plan. I know that the high density would make sewer more possible, but this plan feels like the developer is throwing everything at the wall to see what will stick. I'm sure you've never seen that before. We are asking, please do not let it all stick, but please do consider sticking to your original plan or just let the county develop this area in due time with larger lots, less density, and a step system. Lastly, this plan will require at least one more new school, if not a complete feeder system or a campus of schools. In case you haven't heard, growth in this county does not pay for itself. The BEP formula is broken, putting a greater financial burden on the county for the brick and mortar of school construction. Allowing this plan to go forward will therefore affect all county citizens in the form of a property tax increase and people are just getting tired of it. Please consider everything that's said tonight and do not pass this amendment. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. <clears throat> okay. Good evening. My name is Meredith Zeller and I live at 3141 Lorena Court in Watkins Creek. I've been a resident of Franklin for 14 years. The proposed land use change for the Smith property would have a severe impact on my neighborhood and our surrounding area. From what I understand, the city approved Envision Franklin in January 2017 to serve as a guide to growth. The goal stated at that time by Emily Hunter, the city's director of planning and sustainability, was to focus on growth and development, especially where infrastructure is adequate and available near the Interstate 65 corridor. Ms. Hunter explained that Envision Franklin features a design concept called the De Development Reserve, meaning outlying areas of the UGB without infrastructure and sewers. At this time, she said, we don't want there to be development in those areas. At this time, we want to focus where our infrastructure already lies. So the question is, what has changed? During the past several years, the city of Franklin has made massive investments in infrastructure, such as <coughs> sewer in the southern corridor of the city, serving new developments in the Berry Farms and Goose Creek Bypass areas. The city staff has stated there are multiple annexation requests from property owners in that area where the city has already invested. These areas could readily be developed and added onto existing infrastructure at a fraction of the cost to run sewer out to serve the proposed developments in the Mays Creek Basin area. Because responsible growth demands that the city get the highest return on investment possible, it makes more sense that you all, as a city, fully develop first in the areas where you have already invested in infrastructure. 
Another point of concern is the fact that the Mays Creek Basin development is over a mile away from the current city, city of Franklin city limits. Not only is this a long run for installing sewer lines, but it is not practical for other city services either. Considering the city reports show there are over 9,000 approved and unbuilt housing units, I ask that you deny this land use amendment request and instead encourage developers to focus on the units that are already approved. It seems fiscally irresponsible to amend the land use policies to allow the increased density, especially when the city recognizes there will be significant investments required to provide sewer in the Mays Creek Basin, the magnitude of which is currently unknown and unfunded. Thank you for your attention, and again, I request that you deny the la this land use amendment request. Thank you. Good evening, I'm Kathy Weber, and I live at 1900 Springcroft Drive in the Worthington subdivision and been a resident here for 25 years. Um, what I'd like to do, um, I'm going to give you the comments that we have received from the Harpeth Conservancy relative to sewer infrastructure. And they were recommending to us that also that they would like to see the delay of this amendment because of the lack of sewer access and the capacity in the city's treatment system. I know staff has mentioned that those things are going to be discussed and everything afterwards, but we kind of feel that that's a little bit after the point that we should be thinking about the cost associated to this before you approve this. The, um, the access is not funded and it will require significant six mile of sewer line. Envision Franklin plan states that this area was least suitable to development due to lack of sewer among the other infrastructure issues relative to existing rural roads and that are not capable of even handling the high level of traffic. The sewer infrastructure needed for proposed Mays Creek development uh, in this item are not designed or funded or in motion, so it, it appears to be a little bit premature, premature to support amendments to the Envision Franklin plan at this time. And then the major, the major um, sewer issue or the lack of sewer is it has not changed, but in the, it has been updated in the suitability analysis provided to the Planning Commission now is based on the assumption that the full Mace Creek sewer b is built out. So it has moved from unsuitable to suitable and the city sewer plant is likely to be close to a decade from now to even occur according to staff communications. It might not be appropriate to adjust the suitability analysis of development at this time since sewer service is not yet approved. I'm sorry about that. One more other thing is that the sewer plant is running at its capacity right now at 12 MGB and you already have 8,879 build out units that have not been built yet. So we really ask that you do not change this amendment and um, since it's not paying for itself that this is not a fiscally responsible action to take. So thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> My name is Douglas York. I've been a resident of Williamson County for 41 plus years. I sent all of you an email on the 25th outlining my concerns about this project. Um, Envision Franklin plant has been talked about. is being significantly changed from its inception January of uh, 2017. Uh, there's no infrastructure for this project, unlike McEwen Interchange and the Berry Farms Interchange, where the infrastructure is already in place. There's a lack of roads, utilities, sewers, and schools. A new elementary school cost uh, approximately $60 million and a 3.1 percent bond issue for 20 years is going to ultimately end up costing the taxpayers over $80,000. It's grossly impractical to have skip areas in your um, city limits. And, and when I read about this and, and found out about it, I spoke with uh, my representative, Ken uh, uh, Casada, Glenn Casada. I said, what in the world did you guys ever do this for at the state legislature level? And he said, we didn't do that. Two hours later, he called me back and said, you know, we really messed up. And I actually even voted for the bill and I got to run this one back through the legislature because I can't imagine a city annexing and skip areas and, and crossing other people's land, getting easements for utilities and disrupting their land without their approval. Uh, you know, I'm also concerned about the fact there's 200 acres in the floodplain. I live out that way. I see it flood all the time. If you build walking trails and you have to 
Uh, somebody's going to have to maintain it. The homeowners of that project are going to have difficulty doing that. The density, according to this plan, is 4.33 units per uh, acre. I uh, r respectfully request that you deny this. As a county resident, this is reminiscent of the Boston Tea Party taxation without representation, which occurred in uh, December of 1773. We don't need to rehash that, that whole thing. So please consider this when you uh, consider this. Thank you. My name is Kimberly Davidson. I live at 4115 Trinity Road. It's my understanding that there is a plan in place in Vision Franklin and the mass development of this property would require that plan be changed. My first question be, would be, why would you develop a plan and then change it if it is a guideline that has been agreed upon for the responsible, well thought out development of our area? Secondly, I'm concerned about how the city of Franklin can handle six miles of additional sewer when the current plan is almost at capacity. Would this mean that a new sewer treatment plant would need to be constructed? At whose expense would that be? Where would it be constructed? A new sewer treatment plant appears to be a multi-million dollar project in and of itself, and if the land is purposed for mass development, would this mean the city would seize land by eminent domain? How would the Harpeth River be affected by, by this and the water quality? McCrofton Water is a small operation and people in our area already experience uh, shortages. Thirdly, we are all aware that the influx of people to this area is partially driven by the excellent standings of the Williamson County school system. The Smith's property is zoned to Trinity, Page Middle, and Page High School, which are already at maximum capacity. What would the plan for adding thousands of students to these already overcrowded schools be? If more schools would be built, at whose expense and on what land would they, they be constructed? How will this impact our roads that are already overcrowded? Would TDOT expand 96 prior to the building out of this land? Who would oversee the builder to ensure the infrastructure would be put into place prior to breaking ground? There are many new developments outside of the UGB, such as on McDaniels and Meeks Roads that are already going to put a massive amount of folks on 96 and surrounding roads and children in our schools. Growth will come, but the question is, what type of growth and by what standards? I think when the city comes up with a plan, they need to carefully consider whether or not it is prudent to change it. Please consider all these factors and deny the annexation of this property. Certainly there is room for more growth, but let's say no to more mass development. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, my name is Swan Burris. I live at 203 Waterbury Circle. And uh, I'm going to take a little bit different approach from the my preceding speakers, which I thought were excellent. Um, I don't know what the uh, uh, overlap is between Envision Franklin and our zoning ordinance. But I went to the zoning ordinances and looked up and read that thing. I was really having a slow day today. Um, anyway, and there were the first, the very first thing of the zoning ordinance was um, purpose. And there were 18 purposes that were well thought out, well explained, I thought. And I'd like to read three of them that I think you should, I would like you to consider when you're considering this annexation. The number three thing is to prevent the overcrowding of land. That's a purpose. The number four is to avoid undue concentrations of populations. Number five, facilitate the adequate provisions of transportation, water, sewerage, schools, parks, and other public requirements. Four, lessen congestion on the streets. Uh, <laughs> The other, <laughs> I don't know, I had to laugh at that one too. Anyway, um, the other one was preserve the character and quality of residential neighborhoods. And 
that's number 12. Number 13 was encourage innovation in residential development and redevelopment that meets the demands of housing for housing with a greater variety in the type and design of dwellings. Well, the only thing I take issue on that one was is that meets the demand and not create the demand. And I feel like this is creating. <clears throat> Last but not least, uh, ensure the service demands of new development will not exceed the capabilities of existing streets, utilities, and other public facilities and services. These are things I'd like you to think about along with the comments that other people have made in vo voting against annexation of this property. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> My name is Walter Chisholm. I've lived here since 1980. I'm a I live at 4893 Murfreesboro Road in the Arrington community. This, um, this uh, development will impact me. I speak in favor of it. What you're being asked to do here today is approve um, the study to address these people's concerns. I know they're going to start the four lane of uh, Highway 96 to, um, to Arrington and they put in a new water main within the last five or 10 years out there. So I support it. I think it's an intelligent use of land. I think it's well conceived. And we do not have much development west of I-65, particularly in the commercial area. So I speak in Florida. Thank, Thank you. you. My name is Amy May, and I live at 2212 Grace Point Court. I've lived there for 19 and a half years. Um, I'd like to discuss my concerns about the impact on our schools and the money out of my pocket that will be required if this development comes in. It's my understanding that each new student that comes into our county necessitates a $30,000 capital outlay for the building required to house them. That's the new school since we're at capacity nearly everywhere. The annual budget shortfall for each student is $1,200. And that's the Williamson County taxpayers that have to pick up that tab and I just don't think that's fair, honestly. We know that's gonna happen. We know it's a ton of students. And I say from the very get-go, we know that we can't afford it. I see no way for the numbers to work except to raise taxes, and I don't want that. We can barely educate the children we already have in our county as we already have a budget shortfall. The school board has to beg the county commissioners every single year just to cover the budget and pay our teachers. I have literally had to paint our schools and pull weeds and mulch beds because there's not a maintenance budget for that. And why is that okay? Why do we want to make the problem exponentially worse by continually adding more and more straws onto the camel's back until it finally breaks? Because our schools will be ruined eventually. The Williamson County school system is a huge draw for people to come into our county and we cannot keep up our current quality of education with the unchecked growth of additional students and growing budget deficit, which brings me back to the tax increase. Why do we want to create this problem for ourselves? I consider it short-sighted and fiscally irresponsible to approve this development when it causes so many financial problems, not even considering the other problems. I have a whole list of things that I think that the developers should provide, which of course they won't, but they include usable property to locate the schools that are necessary, but capital funding to build the schools, not just the land. I think they should provide the annual revenue to cover the budget shortfall per student, which is 1,200 a year. I think they should provide the sewer line at their own cost. As you can see, I think it's impossible to get it out of them, and so I believe it's incredibly unfair for the Smith family and the West Haven developers to get rich while the Williamson County taxpayers hold the bag. <clears throat> Good evening, my name is Janet Curtis. I live at 3665 North Chapel Road in Franklin. I've been a resident for almost 30 years. Considering what we all understand about Envision Franklin being adopted less than 18 months ago, I am wondering why the city is giving such serious consideration to a land use amendment and annexation that will allow such a major development. I want to rely, I, I want to really raise questions concerning transportation and traffic. I understand that 250,000 square foot of retail will generate about 10,000 trips per day. 1,400 homes will generate about 14,000 trips per day. This is troubling because according to the State of Tennessee Department of Safety, accidents happening at the corner of 96 and North Chapel Road 
are steadily on the rise. In 2016, there was one accident. In 2017, there were three accidents with having one fatality and one with extremely serious injuries. And so far in 2018, there have already been two accidents, and that's without the widening. This causes me great concern over the safety on 96 and particularly on North Chapel Road. This road is a two-lane country road that has ball fields, soccer fields, walking <clears> track, and playground. The children play soccer, and many times while trying to score a goal, the ball is kicked over the fence and across North Chapel. Before you know it, a child is hopping the fence onto the road and retrieving the ball. With more traffic, that is an accident waiting to happen, and some child will be hurt. When there are both baseball and soccer games going on, there is not adequate parking, so parents park along the narrow road. Adding more cars will only further to congest the road, making it more dangerous. North Chapel Road is also a sought-after area for bicycle riders. When the shared road law went into effect, this meant you needed to leave three feet between the rider and the car. It is almost impossible now to share the road. Add more cars and soon that road will not be able to accommodate bikers who enjoy the openness of the Mays Creek Basin area. These are areas that all need to be addressed before this project moves over. So are you going to ignore the already stated Envision Franklin Guide to Growth? Thank you. <clears throat> My name is Rick Canada. I live at 4348 North Chapel Road. And I'm gonna just share my comments. I agree with the comments already made about the traffic and the congestion. And one of the things that we must look at, and everybody's talking about the people who support this, is they're gonna widen 96. Well, when you widen 96, you're gonna increase traffic just because you've widened the road. What's on, the e what's on either end of 96, the widening project? The biggest thing we have to deal with right now is the interchange at Interstate 65 and Highway 96. If any of you drive by there, you know that during most of the day, it's almost impassable. With the abundant growth and high density growth on South Carruthers, the amount of traffic that's flowing up and on, try to get on in 96 during rush hour, during the rush hours and even at lunchtime, it makes it almost impossible to get through there. I have sat and watched ambulances trying to get to the hospital and literally take three to four minutes to go from Royal Oaks Boulevard to get down to where they can turn into the hospital. I wouldn't want to be on that ambulance, would you? And it's all because of rampant development, high density development. We're not saying to stop development, we're trying to say, let's do something different. Everybody else, we can go through the county, you can go through the country. They've tried high density development and it doesn't look pretty. Do you like Atlanta? Do you like what happened down there? Well, you're gonna have that in Williamson County unless you all come up with a creative way to develop the last portion of the approach that you haven't developed yet into Franklin into something different. Be different. We don't need another West Haven. We don't need another Berry's Farm. We need a different approach, an approach that satisfies the current uh, uh, current conditions, the rural atmosphere, and the beauty of the Mays Creek Basin. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Hi, my name is Jackie Perry. I live at 4022 Trinity Road. We moved here about five years ago. We wanted to live in the country, and so we bought our dream farm, and we call farm, it's only three and a half acres, but to us it's <coughs> a farm, and my kids, we love the Mays Creek Basin area. We love driving by the big horse farm on the right-hand side of the road on, on the way to the 96. One thing we don't like is the traffic as you approach um, Carruthers and the 65 area, which was just previously spoken of. Um, in October, I wrote many of y'all um, a letter about this, but in October, we buried our daughter on our property. And we thought for sure we were going to her ashes with a tree. And we thought for sure that was gonna be our home forever. And then a couple days later, we heard the news about the Mays Creek Basin study. I came in fuming. I was so upset. 
And I realize that you, you all have probably already made up your mind and what is going to happen, and it grieves me greatly. My major concern tonight is the impact on the environment, the impact on my other three living children's lives with extra cars going through there, the pollution, the water, underwater um, issues, potential sewer plants putting in that area, um, the construction, all those issues. I want you all to consider the lives of all the children and the future that are going to be growing up in that area and the impact that we have now to make for the future of the growth that is happening in Franklin is not good for our environment. And I'm not a big environmentalist tree hugger. I'm one of the people that wants something better for my children. I want them to live in an area. I want Franklin to remain beautiful. And with all these properties in 20, 30 years time, they're gonna be run down and ugly. So think about the future here, not just today, but tomorrow and the impact you can make. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Hello, thank you for allowing us to be here uh, to voice our opinions. My name is Eva Nicole Wenzel Potts, and I'm a seventh generation Tennessean, and I'm a third generation Williamson Countyan, and I was born and raised in Williamson County uh, in Franklin, born in the old hospital, <coughs> lived on Ladd Road for 42 years. It's my mom and daddy's place, and when the highway gets when you make the high we already have flood problems because we have a little dry uh, wet weather creek that runs through our property and we already have uh, when it we have a lot of rain it's four foot from our house well I see that it's going to get a lot worse when you do more property and building the highway because we're on Lad Road and also it we're 2.4 miles or 2.3 miles from Page Middle School and it takes me, when I get to uh, Arno Road, it takes me 20 to 30 minutes in the morning to get my child to Page Middle School. There are, I have three ch or two children still in, high, uh, still in school, one going to Page Middle and one at the high school. Um, and the traffic is unbearable. The people that are up and down Ladd Road um, are traveling at 60 mile an hour when it's a 35 mile an hour zone. There's no police to um, police what's going on. Um, I'm concerned about the what's gonna happen to the river that my husband and I put a canoe in and that I've seen my whole life. I'm concerned about the little youngins that would like to walk up and down my road because I used to could walk to Deanna Tywater's grandmother's house on North Chapel and I can't let my young and even ride up or ride her bicycle up and down my road anymore. It shouldn't be that way. The quality of my life and the quality of these people in here's life is changing because of all these people that you're allowing to come in here. It shouldn't be that way. We live in the most beautiful county in Tennessee. We live in the most best county that has the best schools. It ain't gonna be that way if we continue to grow at such a rate. We have the best people in Tennessee, but you're letting people in that are have, they have rude, obnoxious children. <laughs> <laughs> of my child being an obnoxious child. Okay. Thank and you. I think we need to move on with being the best county in Tennessee. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> Hi there, my name's Kate Lucci and I live at 1655 Guy Farrell Road. I'm sorry, what's your name? Okay, Kate Lucci, 1655 Guy Farrell Road. My family and I moved here a few years ago, and I would like to say that we, we tried to not be the problem. We bought an existing farm when we moved here. We moved to the area because we loved the feel of it. We loved how it was zoned, and we purposely looked into the zoning when we moved. I then went to Columbia State when you guys had the big old map laid out on the ground and could see, oh, we're safe for a while. Nothing's coming towards us. Hopefully, this will actually stick the way that it is. I, I do sympathize with the family who wants to change the way that things are zoned because I can understand that they want to try to make the most out of their land and I think that unfortunately it would affect a whole world of people for them to be able to do that and I think that they should be held to the boundaries of which that land is currently at. My, I had not planned on speaking but my large concern that has not been addressed tonight 
is the safety issue that I firsthand have felt in the fact that the area is expanding, there's more people in the area. Franklin does not have a large enough police force. They've got little things stuck in the ground saying, come please be a police officer, we need your help. The sheriff's department was out to my house many times last summer because one man tried to break into my house numerous times. The same man stole my neighbor's gun and shot it at my house. He also stole 14 guns from a safe down the road. They still haven't found him. How do we know that this is not going to continue to happen? People are being affected. Homes are being broken into. And if we're on the safety front, speaking of spool, schools that are overcrowded, you can have an SRO officer sitting at a locked door and a locked entrance. That's not going to do anything for all of those kids who spend most of their day sitting outside in portable classrooms. All it takes is one person to hop that fence and that classroom that's sitting out there because no one could fund the school could all be gone. And for what? Because someone wanted to make more money in having high density housing projects? It's not worth it. And I would ask that you do not change the zoning. <clears throat> I'm Cheryl Hughes, and I represent 1752 Burke Collow Road and 1790 Burke Collow Road. I grew up here, and just for some perspective, uh, I remember 1973 when you approached Highway 96 from Clovercroft Road and turned right to head into the square and you didn't hit a traffic light until you crossed the railroad tracks <laughs> and came up on the blinking stoplight at Margin Street. <laughs> but beyond death and taxes, we know that the other thing that's certain in life is change. And the question is, how much change? Uh, in July 2017, the county had commissioned a consulting team to do a traffic study of the county, and that traffic study PowerPoint presentation is available on a PDF on the county website if you want to search for CTS presentation July 2017. Um, the study projects that by 2040, the county population could approach 500 million, if the zoning stays as it currently is with a full build out in all areas. 65% of that growth would occur east of I-65 because of all the land available. Davidson County is 504 square miles of land area. Williamson County is 583 square miles of land area. The estimated population of Davidson County was 678,000. 889 in 2015. So as you can see, what I'm getting at is if we continue to grow at this pace 20 years from now, if our population approaches 500,000, that would be approaching getting on up there toward the population in Davidson County, but without three interstates. I think that if any of us wanted to be living in an area, the density of Davidson County's population, that we would be living there already. And any media article you see talking about Franklin, Tennessee touts it, touts it as the number one small town in Tennessee. And I think if we continue to grow at this proposed rate, you're going to have to remove the number one and the small town. So I ask that you please do not approve this amendment. My name is Leanne Miller and I live at 1316 Starnes Mill Road in Franklin. Our home is situated on land that my husband's great grandfather purchased in 1915. The original deed outlines the boundaries of the property in terms of paces from this rock to that tree and so on. While I love the history bound up in that document, I am so thankful that Williamson County and Franklin have grown and changed immeasurably during the ensuing 103 years. The growth that has taken place in Franklin in particular has brought progress. Our growth has brought economic and cultural diversity that does not exist in many parts of our region, as well as diversity of industry. It has brought new ideas and the highest educational level of any county in our state. Not all growth, however, is positive. Poorly managed growth would negatively impact our community in many ways, as we've heard this evening. One such negative impact would be to our tourism industry. Williamson County's tourism industry is continuing to grow with an almost 10% increase each year for the past three years. Williamson County Mayor Rogers Anderson shared that travelers from around the world have brought in $8.95 million 
in local tax revenues and created almost 4,000 jobs. So why did 1.43 million tourists come to Williamson County to spend their vacation dollars just in 2017 alone? TripAdvisor, which is the internet's most popular travel website, says people come to Franklin for great chef-owned restaurants, the Masters and Makers Trail, our historic sites, and our growing arts scene. The southeastern portion of Williamson County is very attractive to tourists, with visitors seeking out experiences at the Hatcher Family Dairy, the Barnet Sycamore Farms, and Arrington Vineyards, recently named among the top 10 places to visit in the state of Tennessee by USA Today. The potential development at Mays Creek Basin has been called the gateway to Franklin. Is high density housing the welcoming face we want to put on our community as visitors travel back and forth from downtown? No one is traveling here to see urban sprawl. We have a beautiful home in Williamson County in the city and we've been entrusted with this charming region and it's our responsibility as stewards to ensure it's managed properly. Let's not make decisions today that will make future generations scratch their heads and ask what were they thinking. I request that you deny this amendment. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> My name is Barb Padovich. I live at 1758 Burke Hollow Road. I had not planned on speaking, but we've heard about all the issues that would encourage you to deny this amendment, and I want to add one more. I'm a nurse, and so I'm very focused on health care needs of communities. Um, from the young people the pediatrician takes care of to, the, to our elderly folks. Um, I just want you to also think that while it's not maybe mandated that you think of the burden on the healthcare system by the continued growth, we really only have one major hospital, only one mental health facility, <coughs> and then there's the health department, and I don't know how far out that reaches into the county, but as you add citizens, you're adding burden on the health care system that's already approaching a limit like the school system. And my last comment would be is I'm one of those Yankees who came and stayed. This is a beautiful place. People who live here take for granted, but as has always been echoed, um, already been echoed, people come here for what you have to offer, and it's beautiful. I've just moved my 90 and 94-year-old parents in with me. So I would urge you to keep this. Um, I've already looked around and seen dwellings that look very much like the urban community I left in North Jersey. I'm already seeing it, and so I would ask you to think very seriously about the way you're growing. Thank you very much, mm. and do, I do thank you for all the work and all the decisions you do. Thanks. Thank you. <clears throat> Hello, my name is Randy Fossler, and I live at 3475 Stagecoach Drive. I just wanted to bring up uh, two points that weren't addressed here tonight. One is, I just made a quick map today and circled in red all the already developed areas between the like 65 and this new proposed development. All those areas circled in red are county subdivisions currently. There's going to be a lot of space here where cities going to have to go across county lines to get or county subdivisions to get out to service this area, whether it's you know fire, police, vice versa. Counties can be traveling past city big subdivision to go and service their areas here. And just from a, a businessman in my past, it seems to make no sense to have your city here jump out here and develop this parcel of land and then backfill in um, to provide more, you know, fill in these other areas. A big concern in doing that I have is you're going to build an expensive sewer plant to focus on that new area in Mays Creek. And I was here at a meeting in January with the city and a city staff person said, we can't, you know, a lot of aldermen were saying, yes, we like big houses, we like open space. A city staff person said, that all sounds great, but if we provide sewer out there, we need a lot of rooftops, was his comment. So in order to pay for that sewer, you need rooftops. And there might not be enough here. That means if this gets approved and developed, more rooftops have to be built. It becomes a catch-22. Now we have to build more houses to pay for these things. I just ask you to think and consider bigger isn't always better for the city of Franklin. Sometimes it's okay to let the county develop land if, it, if it's not next to your city land already. Thank you very much. Thank you. <clears throat> Anyone else like to speak during the public hearing?
seeing no one, then I would declare the public hearing portion of this meeting to be closed. So to the applicant, this. Good evening, folks. Um, I'll open by saying we do respect each of the individuals that came here this evening to share their very heartfelt views. Uh, tonight, as staff has said, is, is really the very first step in a long, detailed process of answering questions about this. If we don't ever undergo the process, we'll never have the answer to know what the alternatives may have been. The, um, in today's use of social media, I, I think there's been much um, misinformation about some of the things associated with this proposal. So I'd like to take a minute just to address some of the things we heard tonight and help you uh, understand at least or, or have clarity to some of those. Um, the, the amendment as proposed would basically take the existing neighborhood commercial node and surround it with a policy of uh, neighborhood mixed use. And in all six other locations in Envision Franklin that you have a neighborhood commercial node, you have surrounded that with a policy of either mixed residential or neighborhood mixed use. And basically that's to support the commercial node that is there and give it hope of having uh, survivability in terms of a little bit of different times of houses, some uh, office space there that neighborhood residents can can utilize for standalone business. Um, other than that, the remainder of this property, uh, and there's 86 acres in the neighborhood mixed use, 425 acres plus or minus would be conservation subdivision, which would require that half of that area remain in undeveloped open space, which is more than any other proposed development or any other development of, that's been approved in Franklin. Uh, as a large development. So this is unique in terms of what it preserves with the policy. I would also point out that uh, there's been a lot of comment about the density and, and that's been proposed. And of course the plan has to be part of the, the proposed uh, application, but we still have a lot of time hearing that. But one thing that the policy before you this evening does is it removes the multifamily use from within the neighborhood mixed use. And that, of course, in the plan we did have in there was the highest generator of doing condo flats like you see at West Haven or Berry Farms. That would not be allowed under the policy as proposed. It's basically four units in a structure uh, as a large house, big house type format. So the density is gonna go down. Uh, the single family is not gonna change. Um, it is one that I think as we develop the plan, we will know the specifics of that, but tonight is the first step in that process. So some of the comments that, that we heard, uh, the sewer infrastructure isn't designed or funded. And what has been presented at each of the public meetings is that none of this happens unless the sewer can be worked out. That is the next step, is looking at the funding. And certainly if the city and that area does not leverage the two largest property owners that remain as undeveloped toward extending infrastructure, I think even the staff said it likely will not happen in the future. So it will develop under septic tanks within the UGB. Another comment was that the cost of infrastructure would impact um, any county resident uh, until they uh, had to pay for, for a portion of this. And of course, that simply is not true that no county resident would incur any of the cost for any of this, nor would any city resident incur any of the cost because the proposal is to leverage the developers of it, look at special assessments, look at uh, return on investments, similar to what Five Mile Creek was with Berry Farms and uh, Stream Valley, putting in money into the extension of that sewer and then doing recapture. The, uh, the proposal being discussed, there was concern about the timing and having infrastructure first. This proposal would not see the first resident moving in for four or five years from now. And we're talking about a 20 to 25 year build out of the number of homes. 
So I, I think the, the concern that this is a, a rush of population growth in the area really isn't the case. And traffic improvements to 96 would be complete by that time. Certainly, uh, the sewer infrastructure would need to be in place before any of the development happened. So the last one that I guess I want to share out of the comments was that um, the inadequacy of the schools, and, and that is a, an issue of valid concern where the city and the county, I think, can certainly work better together. And the discussions have already happened and would happen in the next stage as far as specifically what it means. Now, I will say one thing is as part of bringing sewer to the area, Trinity Elementary can be taken off of a step uh, sand filter system, and that land can be used for expansion of the school. And the second thing is to have dialogue about, one person said, the land for a new school that's needed. That is part of what needs to be assessed in this next step. So all those things are on the table. <clears throat> Lastly, uh, there was support mentioned for a gateway uh, anchor development, but it needed to fit the character and future of the area and not change the vision. And what I would say to that is the, the vision is something that, to me, is a living document. And everybody said Envision Franklin was approved 18 months ago. I think it probably started a little bit longer than that. But what has changed since that time? Well, the funding of Highway 96 going to a four and five lane road has been approved since that time and an actual timeline has been set on that. The sewer would be part of the solution and would be certainly funded as part of this proposal and would enable uh, the sustainability matrix to change in that regard. And lastly, the, the fire station that is part of the proposal would help improve coverage and is necessary within the eastern part of the UGB uh, for future coverage of homes and improving the response times. So all of that, I think, is different than when Envision Franklin was first set for this area. You know, do we take advantage of those things and recognize <coughs> them from, from a personal standpoint, having <coughs> single family, one acre lots in the county on septic up against that five lane road and the commercial node that's already in the policy would not be wise planning for the future. So we're looking forward to working with the city and the county and the residents if you take this step and decide to move forward so that we can look at all the answers and the details and bring them back before you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> my name's Wayne Hicks. I live at 6303 Lad Road. Sir? Um, my greatest concern, can you hear me? Uh, uh, the, the my public, greatest concern here. The public it, hearing. I'm sorry, the public hearing part of the meeting has been closed, so we're well, into... You just heard uh, him. I can't, can't he's, I the, he's the applicant. He's, he's representing the applicant. <clears throat> he's representing the applicant, so he's, he's not part of the, the, the comments from the public, so... Uh, I'm sorry. I... Speak quickly, okay? Please. Excuse me? Go ahead, quickly. Well, I'm just, I'm just real curious. I, I've sat and listened, and I think that everything that's been addressed here is more than valid points on both sides. However, um, the city of Franklin right now needs to spend $13 million to get their water source <laughs> corrected, and a $132 million contract was opened up, or bid was opened up last week to bring the sewer to a point that it will accommodate what we already have. And everybody seems to want to brush aside the cost of expansion. Uh, we don't have an impact fee. That's been hung out to dry in a court, and I just can't imagine who's going to pay for all this. If, if you do this, you're talking about spending a hundred and close to $150 million right now just to make what you have continue to work. And you're talking about laying six miles of sewer down the road and all the expansion, and, 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 and there was concern with the $20 million that you got to, to, to 
fix Columbia, that you couldn't fix Mac Hatcher. It just seems like to me that uh, the city is doomed. If you get involved here, the city's doomed. They can't okay. financially afford to do this. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> All right. That's it. <clears throat> okay. So the item for consideration then before the Planning Commission is the resolution um, number 46. Um, do we have a motion from the Planning Commission relative to this resolution? Motion to approve. We have, a, we have a motion to approve and Scott a second. Is there any discussion? Was that with staff conditions? The motion? Your motion with staff, staff recommendations. Conditions. Yes. yes. Right. recommendation is to deny deny the increase to three stories mm -hmm. and second there was also a second correct hold on so limit new apartments to live above also limit multifamily to above commercial only So th those staff recommendations were approval with conditions of the Franklin and Envision Franklin plan, disapproval of special consideration to change the height maximum from two and a half stories to three stories in the conservation subdivision design concept for properties within 750 feet of the Murfreesboro Road right away to maintain the single family scale of the big houses. Staff recommends adding the following special consideration to the neighborhood mixed use design concept, quote, for properties located at the North Chapel Road and Murfreesboro Road intersection, multifamily uses should only be supported above active ground level commercial uses. Those are the staff recommendations. <coughs> Any discussion, Ann? Yes. Um, the difficulty to me in the main sense is the sewer that is uh, it, it, it is true that we have just received um, bids for approximately $130 million to improve the, I'm going to say sewer treatment plant. I know it's got a lot of fancy names, but uh, to come up to uh, 16 million gallons per day. Okay, I can use my teacher voice. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, as I say, the city has just received bids for uh, approximately $130 million to improve the sewer plant that we have right now. That does not include anything that would serve this community. There would need to be miles and miles of sewer and or another sewer plant in, an, in a location that would, be, would have a lot of difficulties. And I, I just see that as a difficulty that we cannot, we cannot handle at this time or maybe ever. Well, one of the things that I want to make clear also is that this will not move forward without sewer from the city. And that's something that we talked about. So I want to be clear that I know that, first of all, being in your shoes, I'd feel exactly the same way. But know that we take this very seriously. We are stewards of some sorts for the city of Franklin. And so what we're voting on tonight does not mean that this is coming to your neighborhood tomorrow. What we're looking at is Envision Franklin is a living, breathing document. So just because we voted on it doesn't mean it never changes. However, without the sewer being extended, this will never happen. What we're allowing tonight is taking a look to see. If we don't get the money approved, it doesn't happen. Uh, if the sewer is never extended, it doesn't happen. Tonight, we're basically saying that we're going to allow Envision Franklin 
to be changed. So I want you to be clear on that. So this is taking a look. The other thing is, I want to say as a planning commissioner, at least to recommend to BOMA, because we, we make recommendations and all that, I do want to say what our growth boundary looks like at the border. By the way, I was born, raised, still live here, care about it. My parents were born and raised and still live here, so I'm not somebody who flew in yesterday. So I care about this area too, so know that. We don't take this job lightly, so don't think that. Okay, I just want to make sure everybody is aware of that. Thank you, Marsha. I just want to say um, the schools are my concern. We've already had a school issue right now with the increased taxes we just had to support our school system and the need for more schools because the schools are what's driving people here. Can you hear me? Well, I guess I have to stand up. It can't reach me. <laughs> I can't reach it. Um, and what would the costs be to taxpayers to fund more schools? And we've got about 8,900 uh, dwellings in the pipeline right now to be constructed. And we've got this funding issue for the schools. They're overcrowded, and I just cannot support this at this time. One of the things. <laughs> OK. okay. Talking to the representative from the developer, one of the things that I think that you might do or might recommend, because you were saying that you'd be willing, you guys are going to talk, talk to sitting down with the city and the county, one of the things that might garner you a lot of support, that would garner you a lot of support, because I do do some uh, part-time work with the school system, would be to maybe look at some dedication or look at something with the school system, because that is a big problem. So going forward, because this is a first step, you know, uh, this that would help out a lot. That would help out a lot. I, I have a com several comments. Um, I find so many things that I don't understand about why we would look at going forward with this. Mm -hmm. I I believe that we adopted Envision Franklin, and that we agreed that this was not an area that we wanted to develop anytime soon. Um, and I know this is just to look at the funding, but why would we waste taxpayer dollars and have staff look at funding on something that we've already said that we're not ready to develop? To me, that's just a waste of time. When, when there's so many other things that our staff can be doing, I mean, there's just the whole list of, you know, the schools and the, the sewer and the, the, you know, picking pieces that's not contiguous to the city of Franklin. I mean, I just, I don't understand, I don't understand why we would spend the time and the money that it would take to look at this when we've already said this is not an area we want to develop. There's so many, I mean, Envision Franklin, I'm all about planning. <laughs> and you make a plan, and I know it's living and breathing, but we're, take, we're going from one extreme. I mean, the, the development reserve is a complete extreme opposite of developing um, of the areas that are almost ready to be developed. I mean, it's not, it's the other extreme. So to all, to all of a sudden say that this is, you know, you know, 17 months later because somebody has said, you know, I'd like to develop this, then we all of a sudden do a tailspin and say, okay, well, let's spend taxpayers' dollars and looking at this, and that makes no sense to me whatsoever. I, will, I'm, I would not support this. <laughs> The only thing that I would say, and I've, I've been accused, I'm going to try to be, I'm going to try to be as couth as I can because I've been accused of being uncouth. Guys, you know, I generally say what's on my mind. I've seen the exact opposite. The one thing I would say, and I hate to kind of pat ourselves on our back, the Franklin planning staff is an excellent one. I will tell you guys that. And whether you agree with their recommendation on that or not, they are very good. Guys, I've seen what happens when you deal with a planning staff that's not as good as ours, okay? Now, whether we like it or not, this land is probably gonna be developed, right. okay? It's fine. And I've seen what happens 
when you have some planning that is not as good as ours, okay? And I'll just be honest with you. <laughs> it can be done and not done well, and we're still going to have to live with it, okay? So I'll, I'll just say just be careful sometimes what you wish for. And I'm the, the only reason, because I'm, you know, the schools, the traffic, the, all of that, I just want it done well, okay? And so that's all I'm saying. I'm, I'm afraid that it can be done and not done well. That's all, that's all I'm saying. So I'm afraid okay. of that. I'd like to have a say. I'm not, you guys can't, yeah, I'm just saying that's the only reason. I would like to, voting for it to go forward, Lisa, and all of that doesn't say, I'm not agreeing. You guys know that when it comes to density, I'm one that wants low density. I've always right. voted for low density. Tonight does not, this doesn't have anything attached to it tonight. So that's the only thing that it, I'm saying. It does. Okay. It puts our staff into okay. spending time I'm just saying, to look at it. Please. I'm just saying the only reason I'm even considering is I don't want it done like I've seen some other things done. I've seen some other things <clears> done, okay? So that's all I'm saying. And I haven't placed my vote yet, but I want you to only Understood. know the reason that I'm even considering is because I don't want it done not well. Well, and I don't either. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And I and I I'm it's not that I'm against annexation. Yeah. I just think it needs to be systematic. Yeah. And it needs to be I mean, I don't understand how we can seventeen months ago say this is absolutely not ready to be right. developed and then all of a sudden, well, you know, maybe we should look at it and spend time seeing if, if it well it, you know this is an annexation though we're looking at envision right now because i want to make sure that we keep this separate everybody knows this is not the annexation this is looking at envision franklin so i just want to keep that yeah. separate okay that we know that all right yes jimmy mr chairman i'd like to make a few comments Speak it's up. not it's a situation where we all have to give and take and we have to figure out what is in the best interest of franklin when you uh the citizens supported cool springs redevelopment uh, the mall, uh, all the changes that have taken place over the last 35 years. I've been here all my life as well, and I've seen them annex all around Red Wing Farms, Ellington Park, and go down south and build Berry Farms. <laughs> Do we expect the West Haven residents that live in West Haven that work in Cool Springs to drive all the way across the interstate to be on the east side of the interstate? I don't think so. If we continue to have another 150,000 employees in Cool Springs and we expect them all to live at West Haven or Berry Farms, then think of the traffic and the access and, the, and, and trying to get across. So logistically, you've got to put these people closer to where they work, where they have the opportunity to have infrastructure, be able to ride a bicycle, be able to ride to work. Uh, there's just a lot of things that we need a professional planning to, and common sense to, to persevere here and to understand our neighbors out in the community and the, and the quality of life. So I'm supportive of this because I want to see it. Uh, researched and extensively planned and not knee jerked. But that's my comment. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Jimmy. Any other comments from planning commissioners? <clears throat> okay. We have a motion on the floor to accept uh, for approval with staff recommendations and a second. It's, it's no more discussion. Then I'll call for a vote. All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? No. Three no's. So the motion passes four to three. <clears throat> okay, the next item on the agenda is for resolution number 47, a consideration of resolution 2018-47 to be entitled a resolution to adopt an Envision Franklin Plan Amendment for properties located. I'm on the right resolution. 47. Uh, this is 20 chairman. <clears throat> resolution 2018-47 responds to the previous Envision Franklin Amendment request specified in resolution 2018-46 known as the Smith Property Amendment. Due to the approval of 2018-46, the staff recommends approval of Resolution 2018-47. The Mace Creek Basin is an area in the eastern part of the UGB demarcated by natural drainage patterns. It's comprised of approximately 10,000 acres, of which roughly 6,000 are within the UGB. 
about 1,200 acres are within the 100-year 100 100-year 100 floodplain. The current design concepts are mostly development reserve, large lot residential, and previously the neighborhood commercial node at the North Chapel and 96 intersection. The staff proposes removing the 2,600 acres of development reserve from the Mays Creek Basin and replacing it with a combination of design concepts. The key design principles to support the most intensive development around the North Chapel Road and 96 intersection by making each quadrant of the intersection neighborhood mixed use and buffering these parcels with mixed residential. The staff also recommends changing the design concept for a few parcels adjacent to the Smith property to conservation subdivision. The second key design principle is to transition the intensity away from Highway 96 into the outlying areas. The staff recommends changing most of the property north and south of Highway 96 to large lot residential, which generally reflects the county zoning of Municipal Growth Area 1 or MGA 1, which is one unit per acre. The outlying roadway infrastructure in the northern and southern halves of the basin are not equipped to take on intense growth and the land uses should remain low density until improvements to Wilson Pike, Trinity Road, Pate Road, North Chapel Road are programmed and sewer infrastructure starts to become available. The City of Franklin engaged the Mays Creek Basin residents through an online survey and also an open house meeting to understand their vision for the future. The open house held on November 7, 2017 at the Franklin City Hall had over 100 people attend and the overall sentiment expressed was a desire to maintain the limited growth policy and the rural character of the basin. Although some property owners did voice a desire to be on sewer and some were interested in being annexed at a future date, most citizens voiced concerns about traffic infrastructure, school crowding, and land disturbances that sewer extensions into the basin would cause. Residents of Watkins Creek expressed specific concerns about potential sewer extensions into the Ingraham property, which lies to the northwest, through their preserved open space. And other residents had concerns about easements that would be needed to reach the Mays Creek Basin. Similar infrastructure-related concerns were echoed at the May 23rd, 2018 neighborhood meeting. The staff believes this proposal balances the development pressure by keeping it along Murfreesboro Road and transitioning to lower density residential um, as you get north and south of the corridor. Due to the approval of resolution 2018-46, or approval of resolution 2018-47 is recommended. Thank you. Okay, so there's a public hearing associated with this item as well. Does anyone wish to make um, comments um, <coughs> in, in um, this public hearing. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, could I yes, suggest yes, that you point out all the areas that, or have the staff point out all the areas that are under consideration right now? Okay. Yes. Um, you can see I, we made every effort to label the areas, but um, if you can follow along where the 252 is, this would all change from development reserve to large lot residential, which is one unit per acre. That's the, the policy for large lot. The Smith property is grayed out, so that's excluded from this. The yellow is mixed residential, which would support a variety of residential uses. Um, this purple area is neighborhood mixed use. And then the area down here um, would go from development reserve to large lot. And this property, this green, um, would go from development reserve to conservation subdivision. And, and all of this would have to be annexed in? I'm sorry? And all of this would have to be annexed in before it would come under the city, um, not, not, not the envision, but under city control? Is that right? Yes, correct. Yes, it is, yeah. isn't it? So, specifically, what's the difference between this, this, and number 30? So, this amendment responds to the changes mm -hmm. in Envision Franklin. Since mm -hmm. everything, for the most part, was already in development reserve mm -hmm. until the last vote, mm -hmm. Now we don't want to be left with fragments of development mm -hmm. reserve surrounding areas that have now been changed. So mm -hmm. this provides a better transition of land use 
but does respond to more of the public comment by providing large swaths of large lot residential at that low density of one unit per acre. Okay, but now as we do this, you're specifying exactly what's going to be low and what's going to be high. So now at this time, okay, as we do this, we can offer amendments as to what is, what is low and what is not. Is that correct or is that not? Or do we have to, is that, is that correct or not? If, if you'd like to make amendments to mm -hmm. this resolution, you, you may do that. Okay. Yes. So, because looking at this, I was trying to bring it up on here and I couldn't, I was trying to bring this up. Okay. Looking at this, the colors, okay. I was trying to find, I couldn't get the colors right on that. Okay. Bringing up, what color, I'm sorry, because I could not find Miss, I could not find the exact one that corresponds to what you, what you have there. Could you say again, could you say again what the, which one was large a lot? The large oh, yeah. lot is the Kelly green color. Okay. And then next, I'm sorry. The kind of the camo green right mm -hmm. here by the 96, that's conservation subdivision. Gotcha. Okay. And then the yellow is mixed residential. And that's where second story is only allowed to have, uh, that's the one you changed. Okay. The purple is neighborhood mixed use. That's neighborhood. Okay. Gotcha. And then that blue colors, um, it, that's the school and the park. Okay. When the when the plans are brought, okay, is that the last, I'm sorry? The gray color is the Smith Amendment that was previously voted upon. So okay. that's excluded. That's the, okay, that's the one that's excluded? Correct. Okay. When when we when I was talking to the, the representative of the developer earlier, when they sit down with schools, whoever and whatever, and they're discussing, say, if they come up and say, you know, we're going to offer some to the school system or whatever and whatever, they would then have to come back. Would they then have to come back and we'd have to amend this or something would have to be changed for that, for like public use or whatever? So civic and institutional uses are generally allowed in nearly every design concept as long as they're provided at locations that can handle intense traffic, the, the traffic that's, that's associated with peak timing of schools or, or something like that. Okay. So generally, we like to see them along certain thoroughfares that can handle that capacity. Okay. All right. But they are permitted as secondary uses in nearly every design yes, concept. Sir. Okay. And then before we get started on this is all right if the Smith amendment is the gray mm -hmm. so then, the, then there's some other areas here that have been also recommended for some additional proposed neighborhood mixed use and mixed residential is that right correct the Where? purple and the yellow the purple and yellow okay Wait a minute, say that again, Ian, I'm sorry. I, As I, did I just understand you to say that the, that the, the Smith is just the gray part. Right, okay, Smith is then, gray. Then, and the, then the, next to that, the blue would be the, the school and the park, right? Correct. Okay, and then uh, beyond that, though, the purple and the yellow are also recommended for a different use than what is out there right now. Correct. Right now, that node, well, it previously was neighborhood commercial. Mm -hmm. Two of the quadrants, the northeast and southeast, were just changed to neighborhood mixed use, so staff's recommending to change the whole quadrant to neighborhood mixed use, so instead of, so it's not off-balanced. These are the parcels on the other side of the road. Correct. And the ones on the Smith Amendment, so. <coughs> Okay. Could I ask a Any question before I make a comment? <coughs> My understanding was that the Envision Franklin did not go east of Trinity Road. And on what you're proposing here, it does. Northern Trinity at Wilson Pike, you're extending what you're doing east of Trinity Road. Mm -hmm. Mm 
all of the parcels that are colored on this map are in the Franklin U Urban Growth within Boundary. Within the Urban Growth mm -hmm. Boundary. So they so are under our planning jurisdiction with Envision Franklin. Right, okay. So property mm -hmm. east of Trinity Road, northern part of Trinity Road is in the Envision Franklin plan. The, the ones shown on the map there are the ones east of Trinity Road that are shown on the map. Not all parcels east of Trinity Road are, but the ones shown on this map are. Property west of Trinity at the intersection of 96 is not included. If it's in white, it's not in the UGB. Okay. No. Okay. No. Let's open the public hearing um, for this item then. Sure. Douglas York, again, 4,000 Nestle Down Drive. I failed to mention previously that uh, the majority of the residents of Nestle Down Farms opposed what you approved. Now it appears that you're approving increased density at the gateway, that being 96, with lesser density north and south of that, which appears to me to be backward. I don't know um, why we can't keep one side of Franklin rather pastoral and not and open fields and open farms and not have this tremendous density like we're going to see down both sides of the 65 corridor to Goose Creek Bypass and what we see at McEwen and Cool Springs now. Um, so I oppose this as I think everybody in my neighborhood would also. Um, in talking to the staff, the Franklin staff, the, the thought is that if Franklin doesn't get some of this property out on the east side, they have the opportunity later not to get it. I don't understand that. If the Smiths develop this as one acre lots, um, then the city could contiguously annex it at some later point, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be the revenue that you'd have with 1,300 homes as opposed to 300, but it would look a great deal better and be in keeping with what everybody's opposed to tonight. So I would I hope that you would consider that aspect of things. Thank you. Thank you. I had not intended to speak tonight, clearly. I'm not dressed for this, but my name is Megan Johnson. I live at 4381 North Chapel Road. My dad was a county commissioner for 20 years until his death in October, and I had many dinner table conversations with him about the growth of the county. And over and over, I can remember him saying, the developers, they come in, they make their money, the taxes happen, impact fees, even if that is in place, happens but it has to be maintained and staffed forever. It never goes away. So whatever you choose to do, I know you're just voting on considering tonight, but whatever you do, it can't be taken back. And the reason people move to this county is because of great schools and a beautiful county. And I grew up at the end of Concord Road. I've lived there, my family, since 1977. We saw what Brentwood did when they annexed that whole corridor of Williamson County and they widened Concord Road, and they did not take into consideration what the county residents wanted. They just did it, and they widened, they widened that road, so it is, it's horrible. It's not better, it's congested. The people from Rutherford County cut through and to try to mitigate their traffic issues. I feel like it's a mistake to move forward without carefully considering the urban growth boundary and what it's really about. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Michelle Fiscus, 167 Chester Stevens Road. Um, I'm having a difficult time understanding anything that's motivating this outside of greed. Greed on the part of the developer, greed on the part of the landowners. Come on, people. And possibly greed on the part of the city. Um, there is no benefit to doing this on land that is already already has a development plan of large plot land and septic fields and is going to be developed. We understand that there will be development in Franklin. We understand that. But to skip 
over this swath of county to annex this one plot of land to have high density development and development in the change of all of the properties around it is based on nothing but greed. And as a 21 year resident of Williamson County and Franklin, I ask again that you please deny uh, these requests. Thank you. First off, I want to make sure everybody hears me, right? <laughs> uh, my name is Ike Ladd. I live at 174 Trinity Road. Uh, uh, once the last property was bought across from my, my address, uh, we knew the train was going to come in at some point on this development. Uh, even originally, we didn't like it, but we know they've invested the money to make their money. Uh, I like it the way it is. I'm selfish like a lot of people sitting in this room. Uh, my concern is like everything's been voiced here tonight. There's not enough infrastructure here. There's not enough uh, you know, roads. This is not here. It's going to get worse. I mean, I, I work in Lebanon, Tennessee, and that's 50 miles one way every day. I can get to Lebanon, Tennessee quicker, and I can get to the other side of Franklin. And it's bad enough where we are. I know we're going to get 96 expanded. Um, I know there's a lot of uh, open lands going to be left for this development. I'd like to say they're being nice, but I know it's a floodplain. I know that property like the back of my hand. I grew up in that area, you know. So I asked, uh, it's really in your hands. It should be in ours. And I hope that you will change your mind or at least uh, cut this whole development back. Thank you very much. Thank you. <clears throat> Rick Canada, again, 4348 North Chapel Road, Franklin, Tennessee. 1998, I was part of something called the 2020 Committee in Brentwood, Tennessee, where we envisioned what Brentwood would look like in 2020. Just like you folks have done now, our envisioning plan of 2020 for Brentwood should have been put out in the outhouse somewhere for proper use, because that's what they did with it. Y'all have taken a plan that you, that you came up with, that you worked on, and you made a study, and now you just said, oh, fooey on it, because somebody's come up, wants to make a lot of money, and you got a chance to change it immediately. I don't know why Brentwood wasted his time on 2020. I was part of what was called the cow consensus. We warned the city of Brentwood that, say, people thought of Brentwood, Tennessee, when they got off at Concord Road, they saw cows. That's what Brentwood, Tennessee was. Today, Brentwood, Tennessee has been overdeveloped it's already. And what's happening in Brentwood? The people with means, the people with the dough, have left. Go to Leaper's Fork. See who lives out there. People who used to live with big country song names or other industry names. Those are the people with money they leave. And that's what's going to happen here. You start running an area like this where we moved to after we left uh, Split Log Road, in Brentwood, where they overdeveloped that, where they, because of traffic, the whole nine yards. You guys even asked Brentwood to allow access to Split Log Road for development. You wrote a letter that I used to read to the Brentwood City Commission about how bad Split Log Road is, and then those guys went ahead and right away they approved a development 100 yard, uh, about a quarter mile down the road, going on the same road. You all do the same thing. You, you read off of one hand and look at, the, and, and, and just don't care what's, what's going on. A lot of people have spoken here tonight, and I don't think you listen to them. I really don't think you listen to them. You didn't care about their concerns. <laughs> These are All right. These are good people. No one's opposed to development. We all know it's coming. But it should not ruin the rural character of an area. As far as people who work over here on South Crothers Road and all the buildings that you're allowing to be built, having to drive across the expressway, there's plenty of places for them to live. There's still plenty of places to be developed up and down the I-65 corridor. I can hear the bell. But you all don't pay attention, and I know you don't have to because none of us get to vote on this. Like taxation without representation, this is going to be annexation without representation. Okay. Thank we'll you very much. <laughs> My name is Janet Curtis. I live at 3665 North Chapel Road. I'd first like to thank the ladies that did not approve the previous amendment change. And I'd like to address some of the concerns that were mentioned or some of the thoughts that the people had. 
This gentleman, Mr. Franks, you thought about this. You said, oh, the people in West Haven shouldn't have to cross the town to go to work. People that work on the east side should live on the east side. Mr. Franks, where do you live? Do you have to deal with the Murfreesboro traffic coming through 96? Do you have to deal with being stuck on that road going to work? I doubt it. We are widening that road. We are going to have six lanes of traffic with no traffic lights to get out of our streets. And now you want to add another 1,400 homes. I think that's unfair. You'd have fair, fair view traffic. It doesn't even compare. Ma'am, you lived here all your life. You've lived here longer than I have. Yes, let's have responsible growth. We're only looking at this at the moment. But what happens when you look? You want responsible growth. You say we should what, be careful what we wish for, because if we don't take what you have, it may be worse. Well, who's going to make it worse? It goes through you. I'd like you to think about this. If you don't live on our side of town, come over for a weekend. Deal with our traffic and the congestion and the problems that we have getting across 65 where we have to sit there through light after light after light. You can't exit the road because the road's backed up from the previous lights. You don't have to put up with all of that. We do. We have to put up with the traffic on our streets for the ball fields and the schools. You don't. Come on out. I'll, I'll put you up at my house. I don't care. <laughs> But I think you should have to live in our shoes for a while and learn what it's like. Thank you. Kate Lucci, 1655 Guy Farrell Road. I did want to address the comment that has been made about the survey that went out about a year and a half ago now. I participated in that survey. I'm not sure how many people here did. I'm not sure if you guys read the survey. Nowhere in any of the responses of the survey did it say, please leave this land as it is. Every time you had to answer, your answer meant that there was going to be change. For anyone like me who read through the 33 some odd pages of when it got posted online, there were people similar to myself in the comment section that said, there's no option to say leave it as county. Please leave it as county. I am requesting of you to leave it as county. I called Andrew Orr and I had a phone conversation with him once about this. And I said, my concern is schools. I've got young kids, we came here for the schools. The response that I got when I said, how do you plan, since it's Williamson County Schools and City of Franklin trying to do this, I said, how do you guys work together to figure it out? Perhaps it was an off-the-cuff answer that I got from that day, but the response that I got was that they meet with them once a year and tell them how many students to anticipate. That is not acceptable. I work on the PTO. I try to raise funds for the schools. I raise funds for schools because the superintendent flat out says, until there is a seat for every student and a building, they can't repair anything. My son had no bathroom to use for weeks in his school because it wasn't able to be flushing toilets because there's so many kids in that school. I understand the sewer is a huge issue. I think that the education of the students and the people that are going to be continuing to stay in this town is a greater issue than where the sewage is going to be because the quality of people that are going to end up coming out of this town are not going to be what you want. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> My name is Margie Spivey. I live at 4385 North Chapel Road. I've lived in Franklin for 23 years and on North Chapel for 21 and a half. Um, I agree with everything that they've said regarding all this change. The one thing nobody has said is the environment out there, there's wildlife, there's eagles, there are foxes, there are all kinds of wildlife that our children can enjoy and that make Franklin what it is. When you change this to make houses everywhere, we lose that. The bald eagles that have just had three fledglings on our street, they're not going to be here when there's all this development. So I ask you to consider why we moved to the country was to have space and have the natural habitat for our families to enjoy. I grew up in Denver, Colorado, southeast, and it was beautiful. It was exactly like this side of Franklin. That was a long time ago. They've ruined it. The people who live there don't want to live there anymore. The crime is through the roof. The traffic is horrendous. They've had to spend tons of money on, on loop-arounds because 
their main roads are so packed. Don't do that to Franklin. Let us stay the way we are as an environmental area to the east. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> My name is James Anderson, and I live at 3795 North Chapel Road. There's something about this plan that is inherently unfair, and that is selected gray, yellow, purple, and dark blue or dark green have some special consideration over all the rest of this huge area. You've taken sections of it and you've surrounded this by high density development, but if you happen to live in that green shaded area, you have no opportunity to take care of the, to share in the development that's happening to everybody else. How did those particular properties come about being selected to be the chosen few to be developed? Everyone in this area who lives here that I've heard of with maybe the exception of a couple of people don't want the development coming, but yet our wishes are totally cast aside. We're the ones, as it's been stated, that are gonna have to pay more taxes as the county has to pick up the bill. We all know it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen with the schools, the sewer, everything else that's been mentioned. We don't want that additional tax. We are the people telling you we don't want it. I don't understand why there aren't more of you that are listening to us. Another question is, are there developers, any of them live in the area? Are they gonna have to live with the impacts of what they're doing? That's not right. Hi, my name is Nolan Gephardt. I live at 4441 North Chapel Road. Um, I want to also thank these three ladies who have responsibly and thoughtfully <laughs> listened. I recognize that the four of you that have voted in favor of this study feel that it is responsible for this group of people or whoever it is, the planners, to take city money and go ahead forward and go ahead and do studies that the community is already telling you very clearly. Our schools are overcrowded. My eighth grader spent his entire year, with the exception of one class, in a trailer. Un unprotected, unsecured, in a trailer. How is that learning at its best? We moved from the Northeast and bought an existing property in this area for very, very strict and, and obvious reasons. We wanted this beautiful area of open spaces, and we have now moved to a school system that we thought we could support by sending our child to a public school. We moved from the Northeast where it's a fabulous school system, thinking we'd have traded one for the other. But in fact, if what we're doing is overcrowding this, this incredible area and, and suffocating our schools, all of that, <coughs> all those reasons people are moving here goes away. I think we've already discussed that over and over again. And the very admirable uh, donation of land that the Smith family has said, they're donating a lot of land for open spaces. I want us to think logically about that. That land is floodplain land that they are donating. They couldn't build on it anyway. So if we... So if we're reasonable and responsible with what we've heard tonight, there is really no reason to go ahead with this. And I understand, Madam, that you are saying that we want to go ahead and do this well. We want to develop this well and responsibly, and we want it to look good. And I totally agree with you. However, if we go with the Envision plan that you guys so thoughtfully developed, then you will recognize that this family couldn't do any more than about 200 homes on that property in keeping with what we have down there. And it would be done well and responsibly. And I would challenge each and every one of you to come onto North Chapel Road before you head across onto, if you're looking straight out at Fly Park. And I challenge you today, with no additional development, to make a left-hand turn at just about any time of day 
And you will find that that is the most irresponsible development of putting a nail salon and a market or whatever else you're putting on these corners for multi-use. <clears throat> we didn't move to southern, southeastern Franklin for a nail salon. I can get one of those in Cool Springs. Please don't suffocate us down there. Okay. Leave the open you spaces. Need to wrap up, please. And I heard the bell, Thank and you. I appreciate your time. Yeah, appreciate it. <clears throat> oh, Hi, my name is Alex Davidson. Um, I live at 4115 Trinity Road, and I'm 18 years old, and I felt it was very important for you to hear my opinion as well. So I know my generation's not very involved. They don't see these kind of things, and I just wanted to get up here because I don't know the numbers. I don't know the sewer systems, but I can tell you about the schools. I went to Page Middle, and I went to Page High School, and they were overcrowded, and I know I lost my best friend because she had to move to Centennial and her eighth grade year because she was forced, she was rezoned. And we didn't get to go to the same high school. We'd been dreaming about it. And I know that's a sad little story that nobody really cares about, but it, I lost my best friend and because of overcrowding. And when I started at Page, there were about 800 students in the whole high school. And when I finished, there were 1,300. And you couldn't get to a classroom in five minutes, even though that's all you're given. And our schools are incredibly overcrowded. And I know it's not the most important thing, but it is important to the kids because we see this. We don't just hear about it. We see it. We go there to school every day. And I know you guys don't miss high school, but it wasn't uh, the best experience because I had so many people in my classes. I didn't feel I was close with my teachers. And that was even when there were 800 kids in the school. We were still complaining about having you know 30 plus students and now we're having 45 students in a class and I like I said I can't say much I don't know much things but I felt like I should get up here and say something thank you guys my name is Ralph Mabry I live on Tullis Road which is on the edge of your urban growth boundary I can uh, actually say that I have talked to almost everyone on Tullis Road we don't need any more expansion. We don't need any more high density. Uh, the school systems are already overcrowded. I won't get into that. But I will mention that uh, utilities and cities are nonprofit. Anything that is built, somebody has to pay for, usually that ends up being the rate payers, whether it be the gas line, whether it be a water line, whether it be a sewer line, or whether it be uh, telephone lines, the rates have to go up to pay for that. that it's where the county is missing out and, and the city is missing out, thinking that these things are being paid by these developers. They're not. We end up paying as citizens. Thank you very much. Thank you. <clears throat> Hi, my name is Sebastian. I wasn't planning on talking today, but um, I'm a college student at the University of Colorado Boulder studying environmental design with a minor in real estate development. And as a future developer, I want to say that this project is incredibly irresponsible. Um, the TRAT, uh, there's not been proper surveying done as well as um, we, um, as being someone from the Chicagoland area and knowing what urban sprawl does to a city, um, this is not something we want to see in Nashville. We would rather see like green space and preserved growth, low density housing, um, as well as if you're doing high density housing away from the workplace, all you're doing is increasing problems such as traffic as well as um, or again, sprawl away from the workforce. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I just want to add one more thing. My name is Jackie Perry, 4022 Trinity Road. Um, one thing I heard was that this was going to be 25 to 30 years in the progress, maybe I'm wrong. Um, and hearing that, I was a little surprised. Um, how many of us are really gonna be around in 25 to 30 years? Um, is the developer, you know, is he gonna be living there 25 to 30 years? No, we probably are gonna move out. Um, when he was talking about the environmental, or living away from where you work, and I know you really want this area to be built so people can get to Cool Springs. But think about the commute time. Right now, my husband works from home. It was 12 minutes to get to Cool Springs for him when we first moved to the area five years ago. It's now about 25 minutes. I kid you not, during rush hour. And so he works from home now. He telemarkets. That's the new way of the future. A lot of people do that. And if you're putting people right there in that section, how many of them are really going to commute down to Cool Springs in a short amount of commute time? It's just going to make the commute time for everyone else longer. 
Um, I know these women on the side were against it, and these four were for, but how many of you guys really prayed about, thought about it, processed what we were all saying before you made that decision? Because it, you just made the decision really quickly, and I think beforehand you wouldn't have an open heart or open mind to what we were willing to say and what we want to say. So what's the point of these meetings? I know a lot of people for Twin Two Farms came out here and fought for their development, and it was a losing battle. And this is what breaks my heart, is that Franklin is no longer an area that you can move to, and you're gonna have the green spaces, you're gonna have the quality of living, and you're gonna be heard, and you're gonna be a citizen, and be part of a, de a decision. I personally don't have to work about, worry about the schools because I homeschool, but I will have to worry about the taxes that are gonna increase, that is gonna have an impact on me, and I don't even send my kids to those schools. So maybe everyone that's here should start thinking about homeschooling because that's what the way of the future for Franklin's gonna be. Thank you. My name's Nicole Carraher, and I live uh, right here. So I'm uh, particularly concerned about this. I know what that area is. It's beautiful, it's woods, it's open. Every night around 7.30 to 7.45, some deer come out into our yard. We watch them with our daughter. We all have binoculars. They won't be there anymore. Just the other day, I would love to show you a picture on my cell phone of a bald eagle sitting in the tree in our front yard, overlooking our neighbor's yard, who has a beautiful pond. By the way, they have horses. These people, we walk our children on these roads. We walk our dog. There's no, there's no sidewalks there but there's not a ton of traffic, and we know each other. And my daughter waves at the cows, and they look at the horses. Where do you think the people are gonna ride their horses and not get spooked? What do you think is gonna become of the cows? What do you think is gonna become of the eagles? And to be honest, I, I do feel unheard. I feel like you listen and you're not here. We are the ones that will be paying for this, not you guys. I feel like, Robin Hood is famous for robbing the rich to feed the poor, and you will be famous for robbing the poor to feed the rich. Anybody else? <clears throat> okay. I wasn't going to, but this, this is going to Can you state your name for us? Sorry, my name is Kathy Manukian, 123 Trinity Road. I bordered this development on four sides, my whole entire property, almost. So the problem I have is most of my property is nature preserve. They are not taking into consideration nature preserve. What they're saying is already cleared and it's at the creek's basin. They are clearing over 90 acres of forest, dense forest. They're clearing all the way to my property line all the way around, they didn't even leave like buffer trees. So I am upset about this because of two things. Why can't they leave the forest alone? Why can't they leave the environment alone? They just wanna clear off, build what they can. Everything is open already on most of their property. Um, so this is gonna impact me. When the drainage, the runoff from all the homes, the streets, where is all that water gonna go? To my preserve? You know, there's not too many people that take most of their land and put it in nature preserve. I did. And then I come upon this and it's like not fair because they keep saying how much conservation. We have, we're gonna have the creek basin. But guess what? You're taking down the whole forest. If you look at a map of this whole area, there's not a whole lot of chunks of forest left anymore. It's all in the mountains and stuff. They put buffer trees up so it looks like it's foresty but there's not a lot of forest. I have bald eagles in my pond. I don't even know if they even looked at any endangered species, plants, or anything in the forest. So to come along and say, you know what, we're just gonna bulldoze everything down, build all this stuff, because people need homes. But what about our environment? What about it? It's so sad. And I'm very upset about this because he is taking nobody's feelings into consideration. The whole entire neighborhood does not want this and he knows it. They had a meeting in November. Everybody expressed their feelings, but he went ahead and gave a plan like this and said, F you to everybody, and said, I wanna build this, this is what I wanna build, I'm a big developer, I need a legacy. Well, you know what? How about preserve the land? So that's Thank you. 
My name is Tyler Gibson, and I live on 4392 North Chapel Road, which is also right here. I just want to say also, <coughs> I think it's a little messed up that all these people have lived here for probably longer than I have, and they only have two minutes to say what they think. And it's like, wow, I've lived here for 20 years, and I have two minutes to say what I think about this. I don't know why that is, but anyways. Um, I moved here from Pennsylvania, and I lived on a farm. I loved it, you know? And when I first came to Franklin, the thing that drew me here was I was like, wow, this has the whole small town feel, and yet I don't feel like I'm living in this congested, messed up, you know, just houses everywhere, because where I live, it's beautiful. And I just feel like that this is very clearly nobody here wants that. I mean, what's the consideration of the fact that Franklin is a beautiful place. It looks beautiful because of that stuff. It looks beautiful because when you drive on these country roads, it's country. And it looks like that. No one wants to drive on those roads and see all this stuff. And I know you don't care about that. I mean, it, this really doesn't have anything to do with that for you guys, but it does for us. You know, and a lot of people truly live there because that's what they love. That's, what, that's how their family, they chose to grow up in their family. I grew up playing in the woods. How in the world? Well, my kids grow up playing next to a development right there in the woods. I don't, it's not going to happen. So to me, my only choice would be, I guess I have to move. Because I want my kids to grow up in a place like I grew up. And I just don't see that happening with this happening. OK, I will declare the public hearing closed at this point. So do we have a motion for the resolution 2018-47? I'm sorry. Applicant? Are, are, are you all elected officials? No, we're not. I am. Uh, this is not. We're <coughs> this is the. <coughs> Okay, I'd like to call on the on the representative of the applicant for this, um, Jeff. Mr. Chairman, the the city is the applicant on this because uh, the Smith property yes. was already okay. voted I'm on sorry. on the last item. This is for the surrounding okay. properties. All right. Okay. Do we is, do you have anything? We further? already provided the staff okay. comments. Okay. So the city is the applicant on this item because this addresses land outside their. The, uh, the last resolution. Okay, so you know, come <coughs> to my discussion here. Oh, okay. Well, I'm not making it. So do we have a motion for in consideration of this resolution? Motion to approve. I'll flip a coin. <laughs> second for Discussion. Discussion. Well, wait a minute. Now we've got two motions. Oh, I'm sorry. <coughs> oh, I'm sorry. I thought I chose Jimmy. Jimmy, oh, oh, Jimmy made a motion pardon. to approve. Okay. Is there a second for Jimmy's motion? Second. Scott, do you have a motion Dis to approve and a second? Discussion. Is, is there any discussion? Okay. So, again, you know, I always have uh, talked about density. And I'll say that again. When we were talking about Franklin Road, I talked about this. I talked about preserving that when you drive into town, the rural nature. And I'm going to say it again here, you know. Uh, coming into town, not wanting to see all of the, all of the houses, all of the density and all of that. And I'm going to say the same thing here. Uh, looking at the Envision Franklin and... Um, you know, taking a look at what we're going to do over there if we do extend sewer and all of that. I don't want to already be boxed into having the, the the extreme density there. Now, looking at it with the other uh, resolution that we approved and then being locked into already having, you know, that's why I was asking you the question about the color purple, the color gray, the, all of that. L having that already locked in, I would like to look at changing that now. I don't want to be already locked into that because when we take a look at that, that means that we've already set that. 
Is, is that true? We're, we're already saying <clears> that <throat> from the very get-go before we even, we've already given that. We're, we're set for that. Is that true? Because I, I'm telling you now, I've already been torn on this. I've, I've done my list of pros and cons. I already had them before we came here. So if I'm going to support that, I need to know, are we, are we locked into, before we even get ready to start, get started, we're already locked into high density for this, if we approve this. So yes or no? I'd like to go back to the map. First. Yes, I want to see. So yeah. the please. yellow, Shh, the please, bright, please, the bright yellow and the purple mm -hmm. are design concepts that do allow more density. Allow it. But right. the green that is prominent throughout is one unit per acre. Mm -hmm. And that is a change from development reserve. Mm -hmm. I, I would just like to comment that if this is denied and it's left development reserve, mm -hmm. doing sewer calculations for the entire basin are, entire, are, are incredibly difficult at that point. Okay. Because we have, Come on. because we have one property um, or one set of properties that have been changed, but we have other areas that have remained in development reserve, so we can't necessarily calculate the sewer in the same way. Um, now, those we can do the calculations, but they won't be incredibly helpful to the board in making any further determinations. So that we would go to the board and let them know that, and they would make the decision on what they want to move forward with at that point. That's their decision. Okay. So, but, okay, I guess my concern is this, and I'll say this, because, you know, I've always, this is not anything that's inconsistent for me. I've been very consistent on this. Because if we vote on it as is, we pretty much, I mean, we, we, we've set the precedent that this is what is allowed. And Four I'm, properties in the county which are not annexed into right, the city. Right, okay. And I'm not prepared to do that. So I just need to uh, So that's that's why I wanted to know because if in order for me to do that, I'm 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 just not prepared to do that. And so because what I would like to do in order to do that, I'd want to decrease and we just like the board of men all of them, they can make they can make calculations based off of that. You can put an asterisk and say you need to increase this because you know Marsha wouldn't do it or you know we didn't do that. So that's that's where I am because I've made I've been torn over that because I wanted the way the reason I supported the other was because I wanted to have some control, okay? But I've never been you know I've never been for high density. So I just want that to be clear. So the only way I could support this, well I'll just shut up. I, I, everybody can understand what I said. Thank you, Marsha. Uh, any other comments? Yes, I would like to say something. I Something that Marcia said made me realize something. And what I realized is that the two options I had on had was to either vote to control the development and do it in a, a good way, which is what, you know, we want to do, or vote to allow, and in doing so, vote for density. Mm -hmm. And so I opted not to do that and take a chance on it being developed, you know, in the county and on the county, you know, and however the developer does it, but for lower density. And so I was basically voting for the lower density. Um, but I feel held hostage that I had to make that choice. Yeah. And if you play that out, then every time anywhere in the US, the urban growth boundary, that a developer comes to us and says, I want to develop this, then we're back to having to make that choice. And that's not a right choice to have to make. It, it doesn't make any sense to me. And so we're setting ourselves up for that every single time. So, I mean, how do we? How did we get to this and how do we get out of it? Because it's not right. It's not. We, nobody wants high density out there. I don't think anybody wants high density out there. <laughs> all right. But what we do want, what, what everybody, we all love Williamson County. We all live here. We all put up with the traffic. I raised three girls here, went to the schools. I know all about rezoning and your kids being split up. I know, we, we know all about that. But what we all want is for our county to stay beautiful, to, to, you know, to be the small town. We all want that. So we're trying to 
control that, but we're saying that we ha if to do that, we have to allow density. But that's this is not the right place for density. But so I'm, we're caught. So I, I don't understand. Yeah, I don't understand. It's tough. Why this is so difficult? I don't understand how we can't have good development and low density. How can? Why can we not have that? Mm. Okay. That's what, yeah, that's what, envision, that's what Envision Franklin has already, we've already approved that. Exactly. So now we're so we, going back because we feel held hostage that if we don't vo vote for it, for, you know, for this development, that they're going to go ahead and develop it, but we're not going to be able to control, able to control it. So we're saying we'd rather control it and have the density than have the lower density and then let them do whatever they want. But these were tied together, well, so you had to kind of right. make it up. So anyway, I, all right, I, I'm glad to talk. But most have said they don't want it, so we don't, we don't worry about controlling it. Well, yeah, but, we, but yeah. you do, because yeah. you want to control the gateway yeah. into Franklin, well, though. Absolutely. But, mm -hmm. but, still want but at the price of density. But at the price and, of it. And this is not the area for density. Right. And it's not in the city right now, so it's in the county, so we may not be able to. Unfortunately. Mr. Chairman. Uh, yes, sir. Just a few comments. Uh, I do live on the south side of Franklin between Berry Farms and Franklin. I have to fight that traffic through Moore Elementary every morning. My daughter goes to Belmont. She has to drive through up 431. The interstate gets a wreck on it about once a week. All the traffic's detoured over to on the west side of the interstate, up 431, over to Matt Catcher, and trying to get back to the interstate to allow the kids to go to college whether it's Columbia State crossing the interstate or whether it's North uh, Belmont or Nashville or wherever. So I, I feel the pain as much as anyone. Uh, our job here, we're Franklin, let, let, we're Franklin Planning Commissioners. We're not voted elected officials. We're not the final say at all. We're here yeah. to bring a practical approach with staff and to discuss the practical issues. If it stays in the county and it's, uh, we do, and the county can, uh, allows these drip fill systems that over time a drip fill system has a 5 16 hole drilled about every five foot apart in a little trench. That fluent uh, will create a bacteria and clog those holes up. At that some point, you've got the stink and you've got the issue of redeveloping those, uh, those uh, alternative sewer systems out in the county. And I'm building King's Chapel. I know about King's Chapel. I'm building Hideaway. I've built all over. Uh, this entire county, and I know. Uh, well, stop it! I can just tell stop you right it. now. We had to plan <clears throat> now. for proper growth. We had to plan for. <clears throat> and do you really think that the density will will be rampant out there? What is ask staff yourself. Not, ask staff hmm. right now what the average density will be with this uh, eastern uh, or urban growth boundary on the average. You saw what happened to Cross Keys and, and, and the, the Adams property. It got brought back multiple times and now it's down to one unit per acre. So, I mean, what? And it was Franklin that protected the, the, the citizens that live out there. It wasn't the county. So, do you want the, these properties to continue to be uh, county controlled yeah. one on one, one by one? With no neighborhood services and no sewer and no, okay, then let the, let, then let the Franklin Planning Commissioners have the ability to vet that out and then let the, and then y'all talk to the mayor and alderman about it. But we're not, we're not, we're not making a decision <clears throat> that, that changes anything out there other than it's the, uh, it's the practical approach to planning. So that's all I'm saying. I mean, I, I, I'm with you. If you don't want it, don't, we don't get it. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Are there any Can other we comments? We ask you a question. No, sir. The public hearing is closed. I'm sorry. Well, it's not this a public is, hearing. This is a question. No, <clears throat> no sir. Not the, the planning commission is in deliberation on this matter right now. So, okay. Are there any other comments on this item? We have a motion to approve with a second. Any other comments? Okay. We'll call for a vote then. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Uh -huh. <clears throat> By show of hands, all, op all opposed. <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> oh, 
Okay. Okay, we need a motion. We need a motion no. to deny then. No, wait, no. It was <clears throat> four to four, right? No. Four, no. four to three. Four to three. three. What I didn't you, vote. You, you can, you need, are you going to vote? No. It's four to three. <clears throat> I yeah, <clears throat> I'm going to vote. I'm going to vote in favor of the of the motion. Yeah. So. <clears throat> it's four to four. It still fails. It still fails. It still makes it four to four. And so it still fails. Yeah, it still fails. <clears throat> motion fails. Do we need a do we need a motion to the opposite? No, you don't. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Okay. Oh, Lord Jesus, help us. Uh, Chairman? Yes. I'd like to ask for a revote on the last item, the previous item. Why did, why did we have to vote? <clears throat> Chairman, What's, would you please recap the vote and state that the motion failed, please? The yes. vote on this, on this uh, um, resolution number 47 was a vote of four to four, so the motion fails. <laughs> and I'd like to ask for a revote on um, 46, resolution okay, you 46. You have to ask for a motion. Okay, okay wait a minute. You you have to ask, is it has to be a motion third. to reconsider, and it has to be from the winning side. Motion. motion to reconsider on which from one? The, a motion to reconsider. On number. So, <clears throat> okay. So that's a, is there a motion to reconsider? A motion from one of the four. Motion to reconsider on, okay, number 30, which is number 46, which is, okay, from the winning side. Okay, sorry. Motion to reconsider. Okay. It has to I, have a, and a second. So I would have to ask for, I'd like to ask for a motion to reconsider the vote on resolution 2018-46. The, which was item number second. 30, which is item number 30, correct? Mm -hmm. But may I ask a question? That does not need to have a second, does it? Does it need a second? Well, it, it doesn't have to be from the winning side, though. Okay. I'll second it. So I was from the winning side. I make, I, I am making the motion that we uh, re-vote on item number 30, which was resolution number 2018-46. Okay, so there's, there's a, a motion and a second to reconsider on resolution number 46? Yes, please. And our vote on that was? It was 4-3. Four, 4-3. Three. Four, three. Yes. <clears throat> so, let's call for a vote then on a revote on, on item number 46, which is the Smith. No. Yes, Emily. May I just? Just to clarify, I just want to remind everyone, this one is the one for the Smith property. I know you all know that. I just want to recap that for, for everyone in the room. And if there's any discussion before you vote. Is there any discussion? <clears throat> and, and at this point, to reconsider just means that we have another vote on it. The, recon right. the reconsideration does not mean that it passes or fails, it's just a reconsideration. Right, so the motion on the table is a motion to reconsider. That has to pass. Then you'd have to bring the actual motion back. That's right. So, so, so this, yeah. is, okay. this is only a vote to reconsider only and nothing reconsider. more than that. Only to reconsider, right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the vote then, I'll call for the vote on the motion to reconsider. All in favor of, a, of the reconsideration by show of hand. Three, four, four to, and opposed, two. Well, what's, your, what's your vote? <coughs> yeah, I vote to reconsider. Okay. So, five to opposed, two. Okay, so that motion passes to reconsider that original motion, the, the motion on 46. I don't know what you mean by 
So is there any discussion on 46? No, oh, we need a motion for 46. Is there a motion to? So I'll make a motion, motion to approve it, yeah. I'll make a motion to deny. Well, he's got it. He's his, he said first. Okay. <clears throat> got me again, Jimmy. <laughs> I mean, might as well open it back up to the public and ask him. So Jimmy made a motion to approve. No. Is there a second? I'll second it. Scott? Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 By show of hands. All opposed, by show of hands. <laughs> that motion fails five to three. So <clears throat> we don't have to vote on this. We don't have to vote on 29 then. So we don't have to vote on the, on the 29. On the other one? What does that do to the other motion? We don't have the to other vote on the next resolution. Well, the, yeah, and the motion to approve and the motion failed. If you want to make a motion to deny, to make it, you know, a more of a definitive <clears throat> yeah, motion, that's a, you can do that. Is there a motion? Motion to deny. <coughs> do the motion to deny because well, we don't need one. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll make a motion to deny. Second. This is on resolution number 47. Mm -hmm. 47. Six. Mm -hmm. Yes. 46. 46. 46. 46. Yeah, 46. Yeah, because we just did 47. And Lisa, for the record, if you could state your purpose. Yes. So my purpose is to allow this area that we adopted 17 months ago and envisioned Franklin to stay the way that we um, intended it to be in development reserve um, because the infrastructure is not there. Um, everyone, the community, the, you know, everyone had a say and that, that this was not an area that we wanted to consider growth in, and I do not see any compelling reasons since then that would make us have to spend <coughs> taxpayers' dollars to have our staff look into going ahead with the possibility to develop it. And I do want to say for the record, however, please, <laughs> County of Williamson that I live in and pay. By the way, I pay for county schools too, even though my kids are good and grown. If you allow development, do it responsibly, Williamson County, because I will be at your meeting when you do it. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Is okay, so we have a motion to deny uh, in order to allow the area to remain as development reserve. This is a motion on resolution number 46. Is there any further discussion on this item? I'll call for the vote. All in favor say aye. Hand, show of hands. Five. All opposed? Three. That motion passes by a vote of five to three. <laughs> <laughs> We need to, do we need anything else on 47 then to follow? No. Okay. Motion to adjourn. Are there any other <coughs> non-agenda items? No. Motion to Motion adjourn. Motion to adjourn. <coughs> Marsha, second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Lord Jesus, get me out of here.